Hey everyone, and welcome to Supervised Machine Learning in Python Part 2, Ensemble Methods. In recent years, we've seen a resurgence in AI, or artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Machine learning has led to some amazing results, like being able to analyze medical images and predict diseases on par with human experts. Google's AlphaGo program was able to beat a world champion in the strategy game Go using deep reinforcement learning. Machine learning is even being used to program self-driving cars, which is going to change the automotive industry forever. Imagine a world with drastically reduced car accidents simply by removing the element of human error. Google famously announced that they are now machine learning first, and many other companies like NVIDIA are following suit. So this is what's going to drive innovation in the coming years. Machine learning is embedded into all sorts of different products, and it's used in many industries like finance, online advertising, medicine, and robotics. It is a widely applicable tool that will benefit you no matter what industry you're in, and it will also open up a ton of career opportunities once you get good. Machine learning also raises some philosophical questions. Are we building a machine that can think? What does it mean to be conscious? Will computers one day take over the world? In this course, I've assumed you've already taken my first course on supervised learning, so you're familiar with k-nearest neighbor and especially decision trees. This course is all about combining models, because when you do that, the result is something much more powerful than any individual machine learning model. This is called ensembling. Why are ensemble methods so important? You may have noticed that in almost every machine learning contest, the winners report using huge ensembles. This was the case for the Netflix Prize and many contests on Kaggle. Ensembles have the interesting property that, as you increase their complexity, they don't overfit as easily as other methods. So the takeaway is, ensemble methods are one of the most important and powerful machine learning tools, and they don't suffer as easily from the drawbacks of other machine learning methods. We start this course by looking at an important machine learning concept known as the bias variance trade-off. We'll derive it from scratch and then write some code to demonstrate the bias variance trade-off behavior. You'll see that the bias variance trade-off is very similar to the overfit and underfit balance we've encountered in the past. Next, we'll look at a statistical technique called bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is a powerful technique that not only allows us to estimate confidence intervals, but also to get a more accurate measure of things from the same exact data we started with. It's almost like magic. Next, we'll apply the bootstrap technique to machine learning models, and we call this technique bagging. Bagging also magically allows us to reduce test error just by combining different machine learning models together. Once you know bagging, you're ready to learn about random forests. Random forests apply bagging, but add one more key feature that improves our results even further. Random forests are a super popular machine learning technique because not only are they fast, they perform extremely well and are a great off-the-shelf solution. After we learn about random forests, we'll learn about Adaboost. Adaboost is very strange because it does things very differently from random forest. You'll see that even though Adaboost does a few things that might lead you to think it won't perform well, it actually ends up performing even better than random forest. In order to make sure you practice and understand these techniques, we are going to derive the Adaboost algorithm from scratch and implement it in code. In the spirit of practicality, we are going to use our new models on some very interesting data sets in this course. The first data set is a classic. It's called the housing price data set. And the goal is to predict the price of a house given some attributes like number of rooms, neighborhood, and so on. The second data set is to try and predict whether a mushroom is poisonous or edible given some attributes like size, shape, and color of the mushroom. Of course, any of these techniques can be used no matter what field you are in, whether that be finance, biology, or online advertising. The great thing about machine learning is that it doesn't matter what field you're in, the algorithms stay the same. I'll see you in the next lecture.